Welcome everyone on today's talk on diabetes and cardiovascular disease. In today's talk, we will be discussing diabetes statistics and trends here in Canada and worldwide. As well, we will be defining what is prediabetes, the impact of high and low blood sugars to your heart and blood vessels, and how it impacts you, the cardiac patient, the importance of measuring your blood sugars, and some blood sugar management tips. Now, diabetes seems to be growing every single year worldwide, with the worldwide rate being approximately 10%, here in Canada, about 8%, with about 22% with those who have prediabetes here in Canada. Pakistan, having one of the highest rates in the world, being at 30%. This trend seems to be growing every year, and take account that this only shows those who have been diagnosed. How many of those out there are undiagnosed? Here we have the definition of what is prediabetes in regards to blood sugar measurements. Readings above these measurements would define diabetes. But how do you come up with these numbers? What kind of research was taking place in order to determine the difference between prediabetes and diabetes? Now, the research has shown that once you get past these numbers and come into the diabetes range, that is when you start seeing microvascular damage taking place. That means probable damage to the small blood vessels when it comes to key organs, such as your kidneys, your eyes, and when it comes to your nerves. Now, does someone with prediabetes have the same cardiovascular risk as someone with diabetes? We know that someone with diabetes could have microvascular complications taking place. Now, that is not the case with someone who has prediabetes, but if they are in the context of what is referred to as metabolic syndrome, that is having three of the five risk factors listed on the slide. And one of those is prediabetes, or as it is shown in this slide, insulin resistance. If you have two more, it puts you in a category of having metabolic syndrome. And if you do have metabolic syndrome, as someone who has prediabetes, you could have the same amount of cardiovascular risk as someone who has diabetes. Now, there is an established link between diabetes and cardiovascular disease. And on average, someone who has diabetes will have cardiovascular disease or a cardiovascular event approximately 10 years earlier than someone who does not have diabetes. Here, you see listed the diabetes risk factors. Now, you will see quite a similarity between the risk factors of diabetes and those of cardiovascular disease. They are very similar. As discussed in one of the previous slides, on average, someone with diabetes will have established cardiovascular disease approximately 10 years earlier than someone who does not have diabetes. Not only that, but it does increase the risk of cardiovascular events and complications post any cardiovascular surgeries. Now, how does diabetes actually accelerate cardiovascular disease? There is a term that I want you to be aware of called vascular age. So in a very quick definition, it's how old your blood vessels are compared to your chronological age. A way to describe this would be, for example, when someone were to ask someone their age and they would say, oh, you look younger than that, or, oh, you look older than that. That is how I want you to think about vascular aging. How old are your blood vessels compared to your chronological age. Now, diabetes 
impacts your blood vessels. How does it do this? The main driving force is inflammation. Another driving force is how it impacts your platelets. Platelets are those sticky substances that when joined together could perhaps form a blood clot. So therefore, someone with diabetes has hyperactive platelets. And therefore, someone with diabetes has a higher chance of having a blood clot. Now let's talk about low blood sugar or what is referred to as hypoglycemia. This occurs on those individuals who have diabetes and are on insulin or an insulin secretagog. That is those who have a medication that increases the ability of their pancreas to release more insulin with a reading of under four with symptoms or no symptoms. Now, some of you may have diabetes and have gone low in your blood sugar may have seen it as something serious to correct as quickly as possible. And some of you may look at it as something that just happens. Let me just correct it right away with some juice or Dex4 tablets, which you should do. But just often think that, you know what? Nothing serious happened to my heart at that moment in time. Now, I want you to think for a second. When you go low on your blood sugar, if you have established cardiovascular disease, do you think that going low on your blood sugar impacts your heart at all? Now, before we answer that question, there are different levels of severity when it comes to low blood sugar. So, for example, if you start going low, you might start experiencing some symptoms of trembling, anxiety, increased heart rate, sweating, and if it keeps going lower, then it may progress to more symptoms such as difficulty thinking, lightheadedness, dizziness, blur vision, headaches, and then ultimately, if it gets to a severe situation where you cannot self-correct, meaning that you yourself cannot check your blood sugars or are unable to uh, drink juice or choose some Dex4 tablets to correct it because you are so symptomatic or you lose consciousness, that is referred to severe hypoglycemia. Going low on your blood sugar, hypoglycemia, if you have established cardiovascular disease, meaning you have blockages in your arteries that impair blood flow, meaning that you've had some stents, you've had a heart attack, you've had bypass surgery, it increases your risk of another cardiovascular event. And this risk is further increased with more severity levels of going low in your blood sugar by increasing heart rate, irregular heart rhythms, endothelial dysfunction, meaning the blood vessels and your body are not functioning as well, blood coagulation, therefore increasing the likelihood of blood clotting and inflammation. The more often you go and low in your blood sugar though, some people may be fooled into thinking that it is no big deal because your body adjusts and you get used to going low in your blood sugar and therefore you may lose the ability to sense symptoms and therefore you may not be able to tell when you've gone low on your blood sugar until you've gone very low and this is what we call hypoglycemia unawareness if you are not experiencing symptoms when you go low on your blood sugar please talk to your diabetes care provider hypoglycemia is something to be avoided at all costs whether you have symptoms or no symptoms, because as it was mentioned before, it does increase your risk of cardiovascular events. In this slide, we will provide a very brief review in regards to where your target should be if you have diabetes and for those who do not have diabetes. The one at the very top, as you can see, whenever you go for blood work, a fasting blood sugar between four and 5.9 is where you wanna be in in regards to your target and your three month average of blood sugars, which is referred to as your HbA1c between four and 5.9% for those who are living without diabetes. If you are living with diabetes, you want to aim for a fasting blood sugar between four and seven and a three month average of less than 7%. Now to assure 
that you are aiming to hit these targets in between blood works that you complete with your doctor you want to be checking your blood sugars during that time frame in order to improve your chances of hitting these targets and therefore living a longer and healthier life we will finish with some recommendations number one know what your diabetes medications and if you are taking insulin know what they all do two in regards to your meals make sure you follow up with a registered dietitian in the confines of diabetes education to help you in regards to your meal management as this will greatly improve your sugar management diabetes education if you have not attended please do so a very important to have as much knowledge as possible when it comes to diabetes and its management and in regards to blood sugar management and checking of blood sugars make sure that you use the device the best meets your needs whether it be a glucometer or some sort of continuous reader device and of course feel free to reach out to your therapist in cardiac rehab if you have any questions in regards to your diabetes management they can definitely help you in regards to perhaps an answer or lead you in the direction of the person that has that answer and of course if your blood sugars are not being well managed please follow up with your diabetes care provider this could be your family doctor uh, your diabetes nurse registered dietitian or it could be your diabetes doctor your take-home message for this talk is as follows your blood sugars and your cardiovascular health are related they are not separate to one another do not dismiss low blood sugars take them seriously aim to correct your low blood sugar as quickly as possible if your blood sugars are not managed do follow up with your diabetes care provider as soon as possible use the blood sugar monitoring method that best matches your needs and use your blood sugar readings as a moment to reflect and to learn do not fall into self-blame or guilt but rather use that reading and use it as a tool to reflect on the reasons of why your blood sugars are where they are at the moment in time was it because of too much exercise not enough not enough food too much food a particular restaurant you went to please use it as a moment to reflect thank you it has been a great pleasure serving you with this presentation.